yet another Instagram Live coming from a fresh and new 2024 edition. My name's Jacob Ballinger. I'm a former gaffer and the founder of The Light Bridge. And I'm here every month with you because light is important and light matters. And I'm more than happy to share this with you. And I'm always really excited uh, how much great feedback we get on this Insta Live. So year after year, we're continuing to do this together. Here with Louisa again today, we're going to be talking about layered lighting. Now, layered lighting is something that's really cool, and it's just another trick up your sleeve, but we're going to talk today a full hour about it. First, we'll talk about layered lighting, then we'll actually do a physical hands-on. And of course, if questions come up, just please ask them. And of course, at the end of the session, we can go back to. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining. So amazing to see you all again. I hope you all are happy, safe, and healthy, and we're ready to rock this crazy 2024 that it's going to be for sure. Okay, off we go. So I said it before, layered lighting is just another tool for quality up your sleeve, right? So what does the quality actually mean that we then need to produce on set? And I think we got to dive into this. I mean, let's be honest. If we talk about quality and lighting, there's only one thing we can talk about, and that's actually emotional impact. That's the only thing that it comes down to and that it triggers down to. We create moving images, we light moving images because we want to create emotions. We want to create that we get a feeling from it, right? So you can call it a mood, you can call it a style, you can call it a look, whatever you want to call it, it all boils down to one thing. A person watching what you're shooting and they have an emotional impact or they don't have one. Let's be realistic about that. If you create images that do not have that emotional impact, you won't be hired again. And that's exactly what we want to avoid. And that's the reason it's so important that we share everything we know about lighting, what we think about lighting, so you all can evolve together and push the envelope you know, of lighting to all become better. So let's go right in. Before we talk about layered lighting as a total, I think we have to talk about why layered lighting creates emotions. I think that's something really important. So it has an emotional impact, but not how do we do it, and not what does it do, but why does it actually really create this emotion so we can use it as a tool. So at the end of the day, what is layered lighting? We have a light, we put something different in front of it, get more complexity, and that creates an emotion. So the thing is, what happens there that suddenly an emotion is created if something is the way we're used to it and then suddenly we add something? It's actually really simple. It all comes down to contrast. Contrast is what triggers emotions. So, I don't know, I'm just asking everybody out there, any idea why contrast creates emotions? Do you have any thoughts about that? So I'm seeing if somebody wants to answer, and if not, I'll just continue on, because this is a live, right? Otherwise you could be watching a YouTube video. <laughs> okay, um, if nothing comes in, don't worry about it. I'm, uh, I'll go right back into there. So I wanna talk about a typical story that's often taught, is Hitchcock actually gave that example. You see a master shot, two people sitting at a table. Uh, opposite sides and they talk and they talk and they talk and they talk. Boring, right? Who wants to watch this? Now think about the following. You have a table, one person sitting left, one person sitting on the right side and they talk and they talk. And then the pan camera pans down while they're talking underneath the table, underneath is a bomb and it's ticking. And then it's coming back up again and then you see these people talking and talking and all you think about is a bomb underneath the table. So we created contrast. I, Mr. Hitchcock, of course, came up with that idea to create contrast. And that's actually that what creates tension. And that's the reason we actually will continue watching the people talk because in our mind, something completely different is happening. And that's an amazing thing. And there is actually a technical term for it in the comic world, which is obviously the storyboarding really close to us to the film world. And a technical term for what's happening in between this pan of people talking, the bomb and coming back up again, that's called the gutter. So let's have a quick look about this, right? So we have a comic image here. And it says over here, right? Now you're going to die. Oh, no. Okay. So what's the image next to it? Wah. Right? Of course. So just think about seeing this image first. Wah. What happens? Maybe not a lot. But having this image before, oh, my God, something really did happen. And you know what's happening? You tell me. It's your imagination what's going to happen. That just could be a kid not getting their ice cream at night, right? The thing that's happening here in between is the gutter. And this is where the emotion happens because our minds are combining the first image to the second image. And the more space we live in here for people to put in their own emotion, the stronger the image is going to be. And isn't that crazy? So what's happening here is actually that in this spot, 
We fill it with our emotions and our, you know, our imagination. And nothing is stronger than that because it's individual, it's personal. Everybody has their own feeling to what they want to see and what they want to create, what triggers them. And we leave that space, it's going to go in there. And it comes down to the less we show, the more emotions we can create. And I think we see that with all the masters. When you, start, when, you, when you start outlighting, you know, you put up a lot of stuff and you think, oh my God, I need to add more, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. And the more people get seasoned in their, you know, in their craft, the less they use because they know it doesn't take much. And the more it can take away, the more it can leave for the audience. And that's exactly what we need to do in lighting too, right? So it's the same thing when we're talking about, you know, lighting a face, for example. It's like, you know, what's, what's more? Is it the front light here? Or is it the backlight from over here, right? It's contrast. Something's happening in between here. The way we see my face, that's actually creating something. So this we're now all of a sudden doing with lighting. We're creating contrast. And this contrast is triggering us to think, oh, what's happening? Did a car pass by? Did the sun come up? What happened? Stuff's happening and we can use this. And that's actually the craft that we need to talk about more. So what happens when we grasp people's emotions? Sorry, not the emotions. When we trigger people when they see something, when they have contrast. So let's just take an example. I stand here and I look down, like in the Hitchcock. That's going to get boring really soon and people will be dropping out watching this Insta Live if I just stand down here looking for 10 minutes, right? But again, if I go ahead and I say, I stand down here and I look down and say, oh my God, what's down here? What's down here? Oh my God, what's the, look what I have. I got a bomb, right? It's in between there where something happens, where it triggers us. And that's the main part about it because we are animals, right? We're out there in nature, just making sure that we get our food, that nobody can hurt us. And this, this is still in us. So if nothing's happening, our sensors go down. But as soon as there's a change, as soon as there's a contrast, we get attentive. And then our brain starts to work. What's going on? What's happening? Is this dangerous for me? Is this good for me? And that's exactly the point where we can take people by the hand and say, boom, let's create an emotion. So that's exactly what we need to do. And uh, I know what he's saying, Jacob. I mean, look, you're talking about stories, right? And you're talking about different stuff. How can you actually apply this to any kind of a lighting thing? And here's the interesting thing. Everything I told you now goes directly to the brain, right? We have our sensors. We see something with our eyes. We hear something. Our imagination starts to go. But lighting doesn't work that way because we don't see light. We only see light that objects actually hits and then we see the objects. But light is actually one of the most physical things we know. We eat it with vitamin D when you think about the sunlight. It produces hormones in us. You know, it produces melatonin. It makes us tired in the night with tungsten light. It makes us, you know, up, up and rising in the morning with serotonin, the hormone, just because we have daylight coming onto our skin. So it's really an emotional, very physical thing when we talk about lighting. So we don't see it, we can't smell it, right? But still it's there and it's our craft that we can use. We can add on to the stories, to the things we have to show and we have to tell to actually create something. So going back to lighting and going back to layered lighting, how we now can use layered lighting and contrast. We talked about contrast now. We need to be really sure that we don't always have the same thing. So like saying, one big white bounce is gonna be boring at some time because just a big white bounce, put something in there, let's add something. But there's one other thing when it comes to contrast, and that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about now, is the frame. So you're looking at me and we have this, obviously this weird Instagram live frame going on here, um, but the thing always is what's outside of that frame. So Louisa, if you just pan over here to the, let's go like this here for a moment. Whoops, okay. so. What you see over here is a practical. Okay, come back to, back, back to me again. So all of a sudden you say, well, okay, that's logical. We had a, Jacob has a light on his, right, on his right hand side, and that's the reason he has a light here on the side, right? So that's something we already did with our frame. We put a relationship between the light that's outside of frame to inside frame, and that's fine. And if Louisa goes back with the camera, doing a shot of myself and the light source, let's say this is our master, Right over here, boom. I always get a delay in the image, so there we go. Okay, so now we know, okay, it's kind of clear, right? So we got a practical, we got Jacob's face, it's fine. So now let's move into the close-up, but look what we're gonna do now. We're gonna take this close-up light and we're actually gonna be moving it to the other side around. So, there we go. So, so what's happening now? We had a master, the light was, from, my, from your perspective on the left-hand side, and now suddenly it's coming from the right-hand side. So the room's changed. 
We changed actually the contrast is still the same in the face, right left, that's important if you want to cheat like this, sometimes you have to do that when you're shooting. But the thing is that we changed something. It's still when you go close, it kind of looks similar, but something lights on the other side. And we were remembering the master, wait a minute, we just remember the light was on the other side and all of a sudden it's over here. So it's contrast that we create outside of the frame. And actually, our lights are always outside of the frame because we're not allowed to see them because they don't belong to the story that we're telling. So with the lights that we're having outside of the frame, we're actually like, you know, a camera obscura, the light that's coming through a window. We're creating the world outside. Even in a master shot, let's lighting a big night scene. We're saying this is night, but actually what we're saying is, it's night all around us. The story is a night right now. So this light outside is actually the most sensible thing we have to take care of to make sure that it fits the world that we're trying to explain so people can have emotions within this world. Okay, so much for theory. I think it's now time that we start to jump in and have a look actually what it would mean when we start to light. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this light source, put it back again. There we go. Hey, cool, you're using Lightbridge. Sorry, I'm not catching up with other, with other people writing stuff here. Awesome, do let us know how you like the Lightbridge set when you're out shooting. Okay, so we got the light again on the other side. That's good, that's over here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, well, actually the contrast, maybe if I put the light even a little bit further back. Um, I don't have enough light in the face. So let's say, okay, no worries. Let's wrap the light around. Let's just bring it up again a little bit so we have a little bit of light coming over here from the side. So we are now extending the world that we created with a practical, just to keep it to a simple little example, to outside of the frame to something else. So if Luisa moves all the way back now, so we show the set. So there we go. We actually see we did a book light. So what we did over here is really simple. We set up a frame, we put a white behind it, and we just did a book light bounce into the white to extend the light into the face, right? So here's the nice and interesting thing. Why did we do a book light? What's the interesting thing about creating the light source that's outside like this? Okay, now it's time to get really hands-on. I'm gonna leave my nice little seat, and Louise is gonna go to the hand. There we go. And she's gonna to come to me again. So, okay, so Louise, if you come over here and show both, show the light source and show the frame. Okay, there we go. So it's kind of clear, right? We have the light source and we're extending it over here in the face uh, with our book light. So if Louise comes closer to the book light, no, I'd like to show you something really interesting about how we set it up. You see how it's brighter over here? If you just pan over to the light source and back again, from the light source, from the frame, on this side it's the brightest. And here we now have a gradient to make it darker. So why is this? Because in the world we're trying to create, we're actually saying the light source is over here and now it's slowly fading out and coming over here, but just enough to wrap around the face. See again, even here we're creating contrast. And you know what's even more interesting? Even here we're creating layered lighting. So isn't that something that Lightbridge created? The word? The, the, the technique of layered lighting, let's say, it's something that's been along for a long time, but we optimized it. But let's stay with this for a second. So actually what's happening here is there's a world behind my frame. And the world behind my frame is actually creating this layered light. So if Luisa comes over here and looks to the back, just at our show card that we have back here, I actually have a chance by spotting the light source, by panning it maybe even directly on the frame, over here, I've got so many subtle control over how I want my book light to look like. And again, we said we want to create contrast. We don't want to say, oh, just give me a white surface, nice and easy. Louise, if you come to the other side, I think you're going to see better. There you go. So this is like a standard book light, but look at this. If I spot this down, I even have the chance of saying, let's rake the frame directly, or let's pan over here a little bit. It's more front lit, it's more back lit. So we're using the contrast, just of the book light, to wrap the light around. And that makes really all the difference when it comes to a more complexity that we're trying to do. And of course, we can do the same thing when we light directly. So if Louise, if you come to the other side again, I'll just take away the show card now. Like a real classical setup here. We say we have to extend the light source, the practical, 
There we go. And we're lighting down. Fantastic. All is good. And again, as we all learned it and got trained, we flood it and then we use our barn doors. We cut the frame a little bit. There we go. And all of a sudden you got a full filled frame to do it. But look what's happening. If I spot this now, I'm actually again creating contrast. What I'm doing is I've got a hot spot in the middle and I'm using my contrast again to the sides to let it fade out. I'm just creating a, you know, it's like a light character a little bit, what we're creating. And that's when you look at the face, at the, you know, at the talent sitting there, by panning around and doing the subtle changes, we're really gaining complexity because we're adding contrast and we're not just saying we're using a big flat white. There's something else that's interesting. This is a half diffusion frame, right? So you actually feel the light source behind here. If I go like this, I'm filling out the frame, but you actually still can see there's a hot spot back here. So you have this feeling there's a world behind the frame. And I've always had the feeling that as soon as you start to fill frames and you don't have the feeling of a life, let's say, behind the frame anymore, the loss of complexity is actually boring. So they have this feeling there's something beyond this world. This is giving you diffusion. This is giving you a wraparound. It's actually giving you a, a, a second dimension. And this is actually, in fact, layered lighting. So if you come to the side, Louisa, and we just have a look at the full setup of this, we have a certain amount of distance. We need it so we can create it to the set, of course, but we have a certain build size for something like this, right? If we just use a flat LED panel, we wouldn't do this. But again, we would not be creating layered lighting, which would be one flat light surface. You could add a second light to do the same kind of a thing, but in this kind of a setup, this is kind of already creating a certain size of what you're building. And that's actually where the whole idea of SnapBridge came along. How can we create distance with no space and less gear. So that's something we're going to be looking at now, what we did in terms of layered lighting to create complexity and light. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just clear out the frame for now. This can go to sleep for today. The then we just push the light source over here. Good, then it's out of the frame. The nice thing with reflected light, and I can't point this out often enough, is that um, you can place your light source actually anywhere you want as long as it's not in your shot. So that actually really helps when it comes to, uh, yeah, just setting up your set. And then we have our snap bridge over here that's already built together. That gets all nice and easily wrapped together and you can change the reflectors on here. And then you place, let's place our snap bridge over here. There we have a similar distance. Okay, Louise, if you just could show the Fresnel. That's a Filex Q5 right now. And uh, we're now lighting into the snap bridge. Now the cool thing is if you've got a high quality Fresnel, um, actually by spotting it, okay, Louise, now you have to show the snap bridge. By spotting it, I can say, I just want the light on the reflector or uh, this is, I see this is kind of hard. Oh, yeah, I hope that works even with the iPad. Okay, now you see it a little bit. You can spot it down. So now the light's just on the reflector. Let me see where it is. Yeah. Um, or you can say I want more fill light and now you've flooded more and all of a sudden you got the complexity. Let's see if this works already. No, that's if I have to light myself, right? Okay. Still not here. I have to go closer. Okay, there we go. Okay, fine. So, okay. Now look at this. Look how little and how slim this build is. Now Louisa goes back to just so the snap bridge on myself. Look how slim this build is. And now you all of a sudden already have the complexity of just the white plus the reflector all coming towards you. And if you, if Louise, if you could come over here just to sit maybe where I'm sitting, that's always, you know, obviously the best way to light. Now turn around, sit down like the actor would and look at the snap bridge. So what you see here is now the reflector gives you the feeling the light source is really far behind and you can just pan it around a little bit to show up down what it does. And uh, now I have the chance that I can spot it down or I can flood it out. And that's where the complexity comes in uh, to make it happen. Yeah, exactly. So that's basically the great thing of using a Fresnel or a Lico with the snapper. Okay, thanks, Louisa. Perfect. 
And this is actually what the layered lighting is, right? We have a white surface and then we're adding a hard punch into it and we're just doing this out of a small surface with the white all around it and coming in. Now with the snap bridge, what you can do is uh, you can change the reflector, you can go harder, you can go softer, you can even choose a smaller reflector in the middle so you have more white all around it and just a small punch inside. Now this is basically doing one thing, but just to even show the, the, the layered lighting even more extreme, I'm just going to do this out of the hand, uh, we say, okay, this is the light that's coming in, we're actually now wrapping around the our practical, there we go, and let's say, okay, we need to add something. Lucy, if you could come closer. I'm just going to hold the reflector in here, right? So that's all going to, I'm going to be doing now. There we go. Okay. And if you come closer, just to here, maybe. Yeah, perfect. So just, okay. I'm not, not sure if I can see myself. There you go. See how now this light is on my, on my clothes. And this suddenly doesn't feel like a light source anymore more that I'm extending, right? This suddenly feels like there's some sunny spot or something coming in. See how that triggers you? Just by adding something small and bright to here, like this, I'm creating a world again outside of frame with more contrast. So our brain starts to go again and say, hey, what's going on over here? What's, what's the world that we're creating outside of the frame? Yeah, exactly. So that's basically the simplicity of layered lighting. What you want to do is, I'll just sum it up for you again. I get my little notes here. What we talked about today is real simple, right? Light is emotion. Just think about the bomb, think about contrast, right? So the best way to create emotions is to create contrast. That goes for lighting as for everything else. And we do this by using the gap. The more information we leave out, the more space we'll let everybody to create it. Like me holding this little reflector. We're creating a contrast and we're letting everybody decide what it is for them. But something's changed and it's become interesting again, right? And it's all about what's happening outside of the frame, right? Always think when you're setting up a light, what does that actually mean if that light's there, right? Of course, the face has to look nice, the shadow shouldn't be here, or the mood should be there, that fit the master shot, but still, we're setting up something outside of the frame, and it's representing something. It's creating a feeling because we have a frame, and people and humans like contrast, so they're always gonna be thinking deep down in ourselves what's outside of the frame. So that's really a big part about it. And with the snap bridge now, we can take the complexity of multiple stands, big setups, and just kind of bring it down to something small and easy. Yeah, that's basically what we have for layered lighting. Now, the thing is, um, I don't even know what time it is. Sounds not. Okay, so what I'd say is, I'll quickly show you just the setup of the, of the snap bridge, just so you get a feeling of what it is. Uh, we're going to be releasing the U.S. really soon. It's available in Europe already. We're really sold out on them, so there's a waiting list just to let you know. Um, but I uh, hope we can show it to everyone who's coming to the BSC show. I can show it to you there. Okay, I'll just quickly show you the snap bridge. Lucy, you can go on the, on the stand if you want to. Uh, two and three, more, yeah. Okay, so there we go. Put the light outside. Just give us some fill light. The ceiling here, so okay. Okay, there we go. So, snap bridge built together and finished, a slim build, right? It comes with an extension arm, and when you pan it to the front, what you can see is there's a reflector inside. Now, of course, I can take this reflector off really easily in the standard light bridge style, just with the C wheel here in the back. And which they found from DOP Choice did. Uh, they made a nice spigot over here with a 60 millimeter baby pin uh, spigot so you can put the receiver uh, C wheel on here. And the great thing working with DOP Choice is that they're all also like us, highly innovative. So Stefan came up with this amazing idea of saying, look, I can open this up like this, let's tear it apart, and boom, and it's packed away and it's ready to go. Now there's one other cool thing about this is that if you turn this around, I still know how to do this differently. So if you turn this around, you can go from a soft mode into a dark mode, like here, boom. And all of a sudden you can now use the snap bridge as a negative fill. Give me a second. 
you bend it over into the other direction. And that's the way it works. Doing this from the back doesn't work. So, okay, just take it to the front, put it together. There you go. And off you go. Okay, and all of a sudden you've got negative fill, but if you bounce into it, it looks really cool too. And now you just can go ahead and add your reflector again onto this and tighten it down. So, there you go. And all of a sudden you can use this, again, spill light that you don't want to have, but also gives you a really beautiful, soft bounce. It's almost like bouncing off a black wrap. It has this beautiful, soft, black, silky thing, which looks amazing on faces. So you can combine this. And of course, you can use Diffusion 3 if you want. You could put smaller reflectors inside. You can do everything you want from right over there. Well, that's the, leave it like this for now. This is the dark mode that we have. And this is our Instagram live today. And if there's any questions coming up, we're happy to talk about them. So Luis is going to go on the stand. I hope I didn't miss too many because I was moving around a lot today. There we go. Cool. I hope you like this. If you've got topics we should talk about, something, you know, that's on your mind uh, that would be interesting to look at. I'm more than happy uh, to answer the questions if I can, of course, uh, or we get other people in. We always do light talks as well with interviews. We're releasing a new one quite soon, and we got the masters themselves talking about it. Yeah, exactly. And if there's no questions, that's also cool. Then uh, we just go offline in a couple of minutes. I'm a Luna lighting. A lot of friends up here with us. I'm just going back to see if there's any questions I missed. Uh, a lot of people joining and leaving. Okay, all is good. So, yeah, I hope you really like the SnapBridge when it comes to you and you get a chance to use it. Um, there we go. There's nothing else. It's coming up. Can you use it with flash as well? Um, yes, of course. The SnapBridge works really well, well for photography. Actually, it was when we started the whole thing, actually was meant to go into photography. And then when it was finished, in front of us, thought, oh, wow, that's going to work great for films too. Works fantastic with flash, uh, with the standby light, I think it's called. You get enough exposure so you can look at it and it looks gorgeous on faces. So we're going to see more and more photographers posting stuff as well. Yeah, photography is an amazing field. We're more and more working together with photographers now. Um, because, uh, yeah, there's just a lot to learn, which is obviously key for this whole thing that we're doing at Lightbridge. We can only innovate if we learn, and so we're constantly looking for ways to do this, of course. Can you use it at exteriors? Uh, sure, of course. I mean, look, it's like any other rag you put up outside. You've got to take care of the wind, and if you're reading them on cars, I just would recommend using a gobo arm, attaching it, that nothing happens, and that should be fine as well from there on. Yeah, the UP choice does really sturdy builds like this. So, yeah, I don't see any bigger issues there. Yeah, as far as we, uh, what reflectors are in the pack that you hand out? Um, uh, well, it comes in the glide kit. That's what we put together now. So it's 50 by 50 centimeters diffusion two and threes um, because we thought this made any sense to add super white because you got the white around it anyway. Um, but of course, you just can buy the snap bridge as well and then you can use your reflectors and you can go from there, which is totally fine. <laughs> Would be good to have a muslin cover. Should you be coming to the BC show in London? Uh, we great minds think alike, they say. Um, we got different covers coming up as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, but uh, good thing. Can you ask the lighting of John Wick 4? I didn't have any experience with RGB lighting before. Um, I will see if I can get one of the technicians from WIC4 uh, to join us to talk about WIC4. It was incredibly shot. It would be great to talk about it. I'll see if the colleagues have time, much better than me trying to analyze it, to talk to the real deal. Can we see a demo of the black side reflection? Um, honestly, we're at total limitations what we can do with the iPad here because this is Instagram Live. But if you go to our YouTube channels, of course, we shot decent videos uh, where you can look at the full quality and you can look at different skin tones. You can see the different qualities of the black side as well. Yeah, that's, uh, but, uh, yeah, that was a great thing that came up was actually, yeah, that was a was, was good way to combine it, to do it. And first we thought it was more about taking the, taking the light away, but then uh, Stefan uh, proposed this surface and actually it was really nice what it does. It's like a negative. 
especially if it's got a reflector inside, but it gives this silky tone of blackness to it. But uh, we're at total limits what this iPad can do. So it's just best to check out what uh, we shot with the cameras on, on YouTube, if that's okay. Yeah. And there's a lot of new people here too. So excited that you all are interested in what they're doing at the LifeBridge. Uh, do let us know if there's any questions uh, that come up. We're happy to join. If it's not possible to travel with C100 to size, what do you recommend best alternative that you could find locally that would pair with the rest of the LightBridge kit? Um, the LightBridge yoke comes off. You've got uh, lock levers on it you can take apart so it becomes smaller and it fits into a van. That's the reason we did it. Um, other than that, honestly, you can, can just put 50 by 50 reflectors together. Really simple. You just with a long gobo arm and you put two fifties and if you want to you put two fifties underneath that even can do checkerboards and you got your one by one there too. You can do a small rig just out of yeah, gobo arms or small pipes, depending where you're rigging it. Uh that's often the way we did it too. And sometimes it's even just nice just having a fifty by fifty but two and three next to each other to wrap the light around to the front. So that works great. That works absolutely fine too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it depends where you're based. I mean, uh, more and more rentals are, are, are having the LightBridge system now. So uh, it's, it's great to see that. But uh, it's great for traveling. Is there any advice which you can give for lighting a short black and white horror film? Again, about contrast, um, it's really important. We're so used to thinking in color. And when you're lighting for black and white, you need more, even more contrast. And it's really important to make sure where those gray tones are, are lying there. So that's something to look out for. But again, I really recommend testing because that's just, you know, a two sentence for me. It really depends the moods and styles you want to do. We have some deacons doing like really soft black and whites. And obviously if you go back to the real film noir, it was really contrasty. So depending what LUT you're going to be using, you might be lighting differently. But in, in general tones, it's just think about color because you're still going to be recording on color and you're going to be taking the color out. So often, even like it depends what production you're doing, but um, often it's even good to choose different extreme colors like reds and blues for people that they would be wearing, which looks horrible in color. But then when you take the color out, suddenly you get great contrast, right? Because if you look at black and white, you can have blue and red, and it's going to be the same gray. So by choosing not only the colors to so the eye, it looks like super contrasty, but actually to black and white, it doesn't. So it's really important to make sure that whatever you have in frame as well uh, has a certain amount of contrast there. I hope that helps. Where can I find a waiting list? I'm interested to get some. Awesome. Uh, depending where you are, contact your local dealer and they'll uh, put you on the waiting list. Basically, it's just a normal order and we get them in every six to eight weeks and then we're just continually building the batches bigger and bigger. The more confident we get and then we can hand them out. So uh, yeah, that's it. If you're in the US, just please contact us directly. We're redoing the distribution system right now, but we should be up and online again very soon. And for Europe, it's just contact your local dealer. Uh, I'm in Mexico. Uh, you, we have EDF uh, you can contact. They're going to become our new dealer. Uh, so that's, that's great to contact them there. I think that's a rental house as well. They're starting to do sales as well. And you can contact us direct, directly too from Mexico. That's absolutely no problem. And it's going to be cheaper to send than going through the US. Yeah, that's that. Any other questions I can help with today? Nothing really, people coming and leaving. If nothing comes up, please just hit us with messages. I know sometimes it's a, I do talk a lot and it's a lot of information. So if things gets processed, just uh, you know, hit us on Instagram. We always are proud that we uh, answer really fast. Vielen Dank as well. And uh, then uh, we're going to get back to you. And also if you've got ideas for what's, what you want to see in the next upcoming Instagram lives, we've got 12 per year. So happy to hear. And thank you so much. Uh, for, for your positive comments. It means the world to me to be in contact with all of you because uh, running the company, it just means you just don't get to meet all the people out there anymore uh, like we used to. So being in contact with you like this is just amazing. And it brings you to the source of stuff. So anything that is interesting and comes up, we're going to be answering directly from the hub in Vienna. That's what we produce and that's what we do. Okay, everybody, if no other questions come up, uh, thank you so much for joining. Have a great shooting day and uh, see you around the world at some place. Thanks so much and bye-bye.